just wanted to give everyone a little reminder about some tips to keep your pets cool this summer. Of course, we all hear about in the news uh, people leaving their dogs in cars, which is still happening. Uh, we're getting 20 or so calls a week about this in Nanaimo, and that's just us, not including the RCMP and animal control. So we really want to urge people that, you know, if you are going to go out where you need to stop, don't take your pets, pick them up from home later. It really can only take 10 minutes in just warm weather, uh, let alone hot weather, to reach uh, a, a level in the car which will um, be potentially fatal to your dog. So we would say leave them at home. Cracking down the windows really doesn't help. And sidewalks, actually, something people don't often think about is when they're walking their dogs, uh, the sidewalks can get really, really hot uh, and so can sand. And we actually see several cases each year of dogs with extremely burnt paws from people walking them on the streets. So uh, be aware of that. It's not not something people often think about. If you can stick to parks and grassy areas um, and, and walk along the verge maybe instead of the sidewalk, uh, reach down and, and, and check the pavement to see how hot it is because dogs' paws, while they can be tough, are also very sensitive to, to heat. What people don't think about sometimes is in this hot weather, the actual flatbed of the truck can get extremely hot and we've had cases of dogs with burns again on their paws from being in the back of the truck. Uh, if you're going to leave your dogs at home in the backyard, make sure that their tether is again preferably on a harness, no sort of choke chains or pinch collars or anything like that. Make sure they have access to some shade and some cool water. Uh, something we do here at the shelter is we actually stuff Kongs with treats and peanut butter and we stick them in the freezer and we freeze them and that can actually keep your dog uh, not only entertained while they're in the yard but also keep them cool. So I hope you, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful summer with you and your pets and, and hope it's a safe one too. Go interactive with Derek. No, Todd. Todd. <laughs> yes, me. We're here at Golden Net in Parksville, BC, and I'm with Isaac, one of the head trainers here at Golden Net. And Isaac, technology is affecting the change of so many sports, and hockey is no different. What is this apparatus behind you? Well, this is a perfect example of how technology is going into sports, really. And what this is, is the DynaVision D2, an advanced vision training system. So one of the key things in sports, and it's one of your most important aspects, is your vision. And vision is a very hard thing to be able to train, because normally you'll be out on the field or in your basketball court on the ice rink, and you play the game. But with this, we can not only play the game and use your regular skills, we're able to actually train your vision so you become uh, stronger with the decisions you make on the ice, you're able to see the field or the playing field, whatever you're on, more widely, you have better peripheral vision. So Isaac, Dylan just showed us a demonstration of it. You know, Dylan is a goalie in the WHL, 16 years old, and he had a score of 121. What exactly does that mean? So what it shows is 121 is how many lights he hit in one minute. But the more important things that we're looking at is actually how long it took him from when the light first came on till his hand hits it. So that's 0.46 seconds, and they break it down really nicely. So they put it into four quadrants on the board, so that if one quadrant is lacking and the other ones are higher, you can bring it back up to par with where the other ones are. I'm a goalie and I need lots more speed, I think. Because, you know, <laughs> is there an old man setting for this thing? Cause... No, but I can adjust it for you. Nice. So this looks like the right height for me now? Yeah, so what we want to make sure is that you're at eye level with the tachistoscope here. Right, tachistoscope. Uh, tachistoscope, <laughs> okay. So Did you just uh, make that up, tachistoscope? No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you want the secret how to be successful? Do it? I want the secret? Yes. All right, all right, so here's the deal. Uh, if you're able to focus on the screen the whole time mm -hmm. and just watch where the lights are in your peripheral vision, you're going to have it where your head isn't bobbling all around trying right. to fo follow it, and you're going to be quicker in your reaction speed. Look straight then. Yep. Don't move. Yep. Three, two, one. Oh, it's up top there. Is the light on? Oh, I'm not 16. I don't play goalie in the WHL. Uh, but uh, what do you think my score might be? Uh, I'm guessing your score usually averages around 65 to 70. All right, 65 to 70, that's what I'm heading for. I'm gonna try to beat that. I'm gonna try and beat it. I'm gonna go 71. I could see how this could be extremely helpful for somebody to get those reflexes going and just seeing those things that you might not necessarily be looking straight at. Just amazing how it just really gets your mind focused on something. And maybe 50 is a high score. <laughs> the first thing that you start adapting to is when, you, when you're working on the DynaVision the first two weeks, first one week, is you really start being more aware of your peripheral awareness. So even if you're sitting in a car, you recognize a pa pastor next to you texting on their phone, or if you're walking down the street, you'll see somebody to your side you wouldn't normally see. And that's what it plays a key aspect into your sports, just being able to have a wider view of the, the uh, playing field in front of you, the environment in front of you. 15 seconds left. Oh, 15, it feels like forever. I'm not sure you're gonna get 50. Uh, thanks, Derek. 
You're not distracting me at all. Oh, I felt like that was terrible. <laughs> so if you look at the screen here, you hit 63. Oh, 63, Ooh, which is... better than I thought. <laughs> 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 This is your reaction speed all together, mm -hmm. but at the beginning of the year, about 1.3 seconds. And just to give a relative, when Dylan was on there, he did about 0.46. Right. So, <laughs> so you got 0.93, and what we're able to do is look at which quadrants are your best. So you, your bottom two quadrants are your worst. So really? What, what we'd want to do is be able to, we can close off the top, so we're only using the bottom, still having you focus on that screen in the front of you. Right. And then we're able to bring your averages back up so they're all consistent around. So it says my blocker size better than my glove size, is that what it says? Yep. Dylan's been training with the Dynavision, actually it's pretty recently, but he's been training for maybe two, three weeks now. So through these practices, we usually do 25 minute sessions. Yeah. You continue to improve day in, day out. So basically the more you do, the better, better you get. get. It's like anything you practice, but technology taking sports to a new level. You know, when you see the NHL in uh, maybe 2020, they're basically putting out super athletes now because they're able to train their mind in ways they never did. In the 60s, you could train, you know, you could be the strongest guy on the ice, but now you can be the strongest mentally. And that helps so much. Personal training sessions on the DynaVision D2 Lightboard are available with Goldman Net in Parksville. Visit goldmannet.com for more information. Now what am I at? 74. 74! I went from below average to Average! <laughs> yes! Average? Todd Jones is far from average. He's behind the camera today. Are you average, Todd? No, you are not. Anybody who has worked or knows or interacted with Todd at all knows that he is far above average and of course plays a huge role in ensuring that we here at Shaw TV stay above average as well. If you'd like to experience an above average art, event. You want to check out the art bomb. Fiona Shedden got her hands on some paint brushes on last week's show. Just another little reminder, the amphitheater in Bowen Park at the Duck Pond there on July 11th. Art bomb. We're going to throw things over now too. I got to double check my notes. Where are we going there? Kerplunks. Some other fine folks who are way, way, way above average. They have a new CD. I've got a good question, I'd like to find a good answer, I want to know what's going on around my world. Hey everybody! Hi! Hello, I'm Tina. I'm Dinah. And we are part of the Kerplunks. That's right. Yeah. And this is our new album, it's called Pants and Mammals. Right now you are listening to and watching our video called Good Question, and that song is featured on Pants and Mammals. What if you and I could build a cool machine? There's lots of crazy things, know what I mean. Wheels and pulleys, ramps and ropes and signs. A tunnel and a bridge will all design. I've got a good question. I'd like to find a good answer I want to know what's going on around my world I've got a good question I'd like to find a good answer I want to know what's going on around my world Hey Dinah, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the inspiration behind Good Question. Hey, good question. <laughs> Well, you I know, mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have a, a burning question about something you really want to know about, maybe something science related or something about the universe or something yeah. about nature. Yeah. And then this song is all about, I've got a good question. I really want to find a good answer. Yeah. And we want to know what's going on inside our world and yeah. outside our world. That's right. Go far if we try. I've got a good question. I'd like to find a good answer. I want to know what's going on around my world. What's going on? What's going on?
are so excited about this album. We've got lots of great videos online. Check it out. Yep. Yeah, our CDs are available on our website, which is duckerpunks.com. And locally in Nanaimo, they're available at Children's Treehouse and soon to be Cool and Child. Yay! Woohoo! We're the Kerplunks! Bye, guys! I'd like to find a good answer. I want to know what's going on around my world. Questions? Go interactive with Fiona. Summer is here, and it's a great opportunity to spend some relaxing time doing some gardening. But you may not be as safe in your own yard as you think you are. This is an invasive plant called hogweed, which is dangerous and toxic. Hogweed actually has a very toxic sap in it, and the sap is found throughout the plant in the flowers, the stem, the leaves, and the root. And the problem with the sap is that uh, when it gets in contact with the skin and exposed to sun, it can cause essentially a form of burning, so inflammation, blisters, um, it can also be a very painful rash. Sometimes the reaction doesn't happen until um, a couple days after the exposure. And the rash can also become darkly pigmented and actually lead to scarring. So you basically want to avoid exposure to hogweed um, as much as you can. In fact, even on a very windy day, the sap can be blown onto you and you can actually be exposed in that way too. We're here with Rob Lawrence, an environmental planner from the city of Nanaimo. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of hogweed. What is it, Rob? Well, it's, I guess it's a garden curiosity. It's a, a plant that was brought over from Asia at the turn of the last century. It um, has a very large kind of variegated leaf and um, very large stems. It can be up to 12 feet in height. And so it's very distinctive when you see it. And um, recently, in the last 10, 15 years, there's been concerns raised about the toxicity of the sap and some health concerns. And that's primarily the reason why the city and other organizations are trying to raise awareness about the plant and the steps you may need to do to kind of control it, take care of it. So when, when we find a plant that we don't want in our yard, often our go-to is to cut it out, yeah. pull out the weed. Yeah. Is this a good idea with hogweed? Not with this plant, and that's why, again, we're, we're making the effort to, to go out in the community and tell people more about this particular plant. And what would you recommend to someone who has it in their yard and maybe thinks it's hogweed, isn't quite sure, what should they do? The best thing for people to do is to first contact us to make sure that the identification of the plant is hogweed. Um, then the best thing to do is to hire a contractor to get some professional people to remove it. Um, if the person is not sure what they're dealing with or they just want some additional um, advice or professional expertise involved. Um, they could also contact their local government. They might have also some um, recommendations for contractors. Well, I think the first thing to do is, is, is contact either the Coastal Invasive Species Committee or City of Nanaimo, um, the City Parks Department. Uh, contact myself directly and we can send you some information that gives you more of a clearer description just so that you're more comfortable with knowing what it is. Just to know too, there, there is a native plant that's common to this area that actually has, has a similar look to this, to, to hogweed. So that's one of the things we'll just clarify for people as well. So I know I'll definitely be thinking twice before I start pulling things out of my garden without knowing what they are. Thanks very much, Rob. Oh, not a problem. <laughs>